what's up everybody it's Amaya so I don't have any eye makeup on right now and the reasoning for that is because today I'm going to be doing a first impressions and tutorial on the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette oh my goodness I am so excited to have gotten my hands on this palette. Much thanks to Zach and my mom for helping me do this. Um, I am, I'm just, I have no words right now. This palette has been two years in the making. I love Jacqueline so much. I think she is so genuine and so nice and I love her videos and I love her as a person. So I am so excited to be able to play with this palette. It just came in yesterday and I have only swatched a few of the shades. I haven't used any of them on my eyes. So I'm going to give you a full in-depth first impressions and I will be giving you my honest opinion. Even though I do love Jacqueline and I support her no matter what, I will never give you guys an opinion that is not my own just because the product is made by somebody I like or it is a brand that I like. Either way, I will always give you my honest opinion, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. Okay, so I figure that we should just hop right in. Um, I'm going to start talking about the palette first. So this is what the packaging looks like. It has Jaclyn Hill in shiny letters. Um, the and then palette are matte. It's nice silver and white packaging. And then Morphe down here is also shiny. And then on the back, we have these adorable pictures of Jacqueline right here. And the back reads, creating this palette has truly been a dream come true for me. Morphe gave me full creative control and allowed me to customize my dream palette for everyone to enjoy. Every shade was customized by me, and I really hope you guys love it as much as I do. I wanted a range of neutrals and pops of color to accommodate all skin tones. I put my heart and soul into this palette, and I hope my pickiness pays off. XO Jacqueline. So I think that's really great. I think it's great that she included that. If you guys don't follow her on Snapchat or you don't follow her just in general, um, this palette took her two years to create. She was super picky with it. It was supposed to launch a bunch of times, but each time she was like, no, it's not right. I don't like it. This needs to be changed. This needs to be changed. It's not perfect. So now it's finally launched and she finally thinks it's perfect. So I'm very happy about that. I'd rather have um, to wait a very long time for something to come out because someone wants it to be perfect than to get it right away and have it not be so great. So I do appreciate her pickiness on that. You also get this little card right here that has all of these shade names on it. And then on the back, it has a picture of her, a picture of an eye look that she did with the palette, and just some information about Morphe. We have the palette wrapped in bubble wrap. And then you have the actual palette itself. So it looks just like the packaging, matte cardboard white um, packaging with Jaclyn Hill in silver, the and then palette in matte gray, and then Morphe that's shiny. And then on the back you have Morphe times Jaclyn Hill and then JH printed all over. So I think it's really pretty packaging. A lot of people were complaining about the white because you can't really wipe it off, but I feel like if you're very careful, you can work with this, but it is kind of annoying that it's not like a wipeable, like shiny cardboard, you know what I mean? Or something a little bit st more sturdy, but I understand to get it to be $38, which is the price, and have 35 eyeshadows that are custom pressed and with custom ingredients and formulas that you have to kind of cut corner somewhere and if it's on the packaging and not the product I would much rather have that. So yeah like I said all of these shadows in here are formulated differently than the typical Morphe shadows. That's what Jacqueline has said and that's what Morphe has said and that they are pressed differently and just made differently than all the Morphe shadows. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, I know a lot of people were saying that they wish that if they're going to do this on this palette that they'll do it in all their future palettes. I think that would be really awesome but who knows if they'll actually do that. I feel like I really liked the 35O palette and I have the 35OM and the 35OS and the original Jaclyn Hill Favorites palette and I love all of those palettes. I don't have an issue with the formulation so if they change it, great. If not, it's not a big deal to me because I did like the original formulation. So it is magnetic and when you open it up, this is what the palette looks like. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. 
I love it so much because you have all of these neutral shades, some pinky tones, even some like cool tones. Then you have all these pops of color down here and like the red tones. It's just such a cohesive palette with so many different colors. I think the color selection is amazing and just absolutely awesome. And then right here it says this palette is dedicated to all of my loving subscribers, XO Jacqueline. And I think that's a great little touch to put in there. She's always talking about how much she loves her subscribers and how everything she does is for her subscribers. So I think it's really nice that she put that in here and I really love that. So we have two satin colors right here, a bunch of shimmers, some matte, and then this shade right here is a pressed glitter. So we have a nice range of things. I'm glad to see that there are a lot of matte colors in here, being a matte eyeshadow lover. I'm glad to see that there's a lot of matte and also some really cool shimmers that I do feel like I could use. And I also do like the pops of color because I don't typically have pops of color in my collection so I think it's kind of neat to have all these neutrals but also have those pops of color. The palette also comes with a matte black which I think is really great. The only thing it does not come with is a matte white eyeshadow which I would rather have all of these transition colors and browns and reds than have one white matte shade because I feel like you can just use translucent powder to set your lids or to highlight or another eyeshadow and stuff like that. I do understand that some people really do like a matte highlight and I do like that as well but I would rather have so many other like transition shades or all of these cool shimmery shades or the colorful shades than to just have one matte white because I have so many in other palettes. Okay, another thing people were complaining about is that this does not have a mirror. Okay, personally for me, I don't mind not having a mirror because I'm someone who always has a mirror with me or I have it in a different compact if I'm traveling and stuff like that. And I don't travel that often, so I typically do have a mirror. But I do see how that could have been a nice addition to this. But I do understand um, that, again, they probably had to cut costs somewhere and not having a mirror was probably one of the places they had to cut. And the other thing that is really annoying to me as well is that the shade names are not in the palette underneath the names. That really annoys me because it's really hard as a YouTuber to have to go back and forth with this little sheet and read off all the names and stuff like that. You could always glue it right here so that way you have it or glue it on the back but I don't want to do that. One, I don't want to ruin my palette and two, I love that she has this little message here. I don't want to cover it up and I also don't want to cover up the back so I'm always going to keep this with me but it is pretty annoying. I wish they could have just printed the shades on there. But anyways, let's get right into doing the eye makeup, shall we? Okay, so I just started to film and luckily I checked my camera because it was not recording so I had to wipe off my eyeshadow and we are here to start again. So... Take two, shall we? So I'm going to go in with this shade right here, which is called Silk Cream. And I'm going to go in with my BH Cosmetics brush right here. And I'm just going to dip into that. Um, I used this color when I was filming this before. And as you can see, it blends so beautifully. It's such a pretty light transition shade. Oh my God. So I'm just blending that into the crease and also up towards the brow bone and on the outer corner pretty much everywhere. Now I'm going to go in with MFEO which is made for each other and it's just like a slightly darker transition shade right here. These are both pretty neutral shades and I'm just going to blend that into the crease kind of where I put the same transition color. This is just going to kind of act as a second transition. You really honestly don't even need to tap off your brush with this shadow because if you like have too much on it just blends out so beautifully and it just looks gorgeous either way and that is much appreciated. I feel like you could definitely use this for some quick looks because the shadows pretty much just blend themselves. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of pukey which is this shade right here. It's a nice like baby puke shade. If you guys watch Jacqueline you'll know that she loves shades that look like that and she calls them baby puke shades so that is why that shade is called pukey. And I'm just going to again blend this into the crease. Wow, that one's really pigmented. The gorgeous, like, yellowy green shade, but it's not too weird looking, you know what I mean? It's a nice camely warm brown, but it's not too green where it looks really strange on the eyes. It looks very natural and so beautiful, so I really do appreciate that. And then I'm just going to go in with a little bit of Pooter, which is the shade right here. And I'm just, it's just a nice, like, 
cool toned slightly mauvey brown and on that same brush again I'm just going to apply this keeping it a little bit more on the outer corner but just putting it in to create more depth these shadows layer so nicely on top of each other as well they don't get muddy but they totally blend like together but they don't turn into a muddy mess which I love okay so I think I want to go in with a little bit of this shade which is called hunts it's a nice like orangey fiery shade and I'm just going to tap into that with a morphe m441 Whew. and I'm just going to very oh my god I'm just gonna very lightly clean that brush off a little bit and apply that to the crease holy moly but look how lovely that blends that just blends so beautifully I literally just like that blended itself like did you guys see that I didn't have to like do any work. I'm gonna go in with this shade right here, which is called Jax. It is such a unique shade. It's like a burgundy. It's not too like maroon. It's not too orange. It's just the coolest like dark red shade. I just love it. It's so yummy. And it's calling my name. So I'm just gonna take it on that same brush and just put that on the outer corner as well and blend that into the crease. I feel like I don't have a shade like this at all. It's so unique and so gorgeous. It's almost like a true red, but it has like a hint of like purple in it. Okay, so I'm going to go into this shade right here, which is called Chip. It's like a kind of like nice purpley brown. And I'm just going to tap into that. It reminds me of like Makeup Geek Americano. And I'm just going to apply that to the outer corner. And then I'm going to take my Morphe M441 to kind of blend that out. This color is so pretty as well. I'm just going to blend that out with this first brush that we used. Okay, so I want to go in with this shade right here, which is called Soda Pop, right? Mm -hmm. Soda Pop right here, which is like a dark purple that almost looks black it's like so pretty this last row with all the colors definitely has like some nice darkness to them so you can totally use them it's so beautiful without them looking too colorful oh my god look at look at the pigment on that holy heck let's blend that out these eyeshadows are not skipping or getting choppy and by the way, I prime my eyes using concealer and a little bit of powder. I also have an eye primer under the concealer, so typically how I would prime. But oh my gosh. And I am not getting any fallout, like, at all. I love that. Okay, now I'm going to go into the black shade right here, which is called Abyss. And I'm going to put that on the outer corner to deepen it up. Just using an e.l.f. pencil brush to do this. I don't want a ton of black because I don't want to overpower this like purpliness. Okay, so I don't know what color I want to use for my lid. Oh, so many beautiful colors. Should I go with something like this blue? It just looks so gorgeous. I can't tell if I should go with something like that. Okay, screw it. We're just going to go in with this shade. This shade is twerk. I just... It's literally calling me and I've never had a blue call my name before and I just <sighs> This look would be so beautiful just matte like this, but I totally want to try out a shimmer shade and I could totally use one of the neutral ones like obsessed. I was totally considering using that but <sighs> I'm just gonna go with blue. So I'm just going to pick this up on an elf shadow brush And we're just gonna put this on the eyes. Jacqueline did say that these would be much better applied with a finger, but I just, because I don't typically use blues like this, I just want to get down a base. I take it on my finger and just pack on some more pigment. Oh my god, that's so pretty. It's like a stunning, like, cobalt blue with like a hint of purple in it. I do have to go into this shade a few times to get the color to be completely like opaque but again I don't really mind that because I feel like if I'm typically using this shade I don't want it to be like crazy pigmented right off the bat because I feel like that would be hard to blend out so don't mind it just want to make a note of that okay so I'm just gonna go back in with this shade that I had that purpley shade on and just blend everything out like that and then go back in with the Morphe M441 and just make sure we have no harsh lines. I'm just going to go back in with a little bit more of Abyss. 
just to darken that outer corner up. Tapping back into a little bit of Hunt's just to add some more red throughout here to blend everything out. And then I'm just gonna re-intensify that blue. Okay, so for my inner corner highlight, I'm going to go in to the shade right here, which is called Obsessed. And I'm just going to put this right here. This is like a perfect like prom shadow, I feel like. And then I'm gonna go in with and light, which is the shade right here. And I'm just gonna pick that up and put that right in the inner corner. That's beautiful, that's like so beaming and so pretty. Okay, so I just added some winged liner and some falsies. So now it is time to do the lower lash line. So I think I'm gonna first go in with a little bit of twerk on this Morphe E11, and I'm just gonna put this really close to my lash line. Then I'm going to go back in with a little bit of the shade Pukey on a little pencil brush just like this. And I'm just going to start to blend that out. Then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Hunts, which was that fiery orange shade, and I'm also just going to blend that. Oh, that's pigmented. And then lastly, I'm just going to take a little bit of that purpley shade called Soda Pop and a little bit of that black and just put that on the outer corner like so and just blend that out. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of twerk and just brighten up that blueness that we have underneath here. I'm gonna take a little bit of silk cream and just put this lower right here just to make sure this blends out. These shades are blending so beautifully on the lower lash line, which is amazing. I'm just gonna go back in with a little bit more of In Light, which was that inner corner highlight, and just brighten that up in case we lost some of it. And I'm gonna go back in with In Light again and just highlight the brow bone. Oh, that's gorgeous. So beautiful brow bone highlight. Okay, so I just went in with a little bit of these lipsticks. This is Daringly Nude and Nude Nuances from Maybelline. And I just topped it off with a little bit of White Russian from Buxom. So this completes this Jaclyn Hill palette makeup tutorial. I hope you guys really like this. So my final thoughts on the palette is that it is absolutely amazing. I really, really love it. These colors blended so beautifully and they look absolutely gorgeous. I, I'm literally at no words right now because they are so beautiful. It is currently sold out, but the palette will be restocking soon on Morphe.com, which I'm so excited about because I really want you guys to be able to get your hands on it because it is a really nice palette. I know for Morphe prices, 38 might seem a lot, but if you think about it, that's only a little bit more than a dollar a shadow, which where else are you gonna get a dollar a shadow, right? And for these amazing quality shadows, so I do think it is worth it. And if you love Jaclyn, um, I think it is a great way to support her by buying this palette. Even if you don't love her, I think you should still totally go out and buy this palette because it's just so awesome. So yeah, that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you guys like it. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Amaya. So as you can tell, I'm looking a little different than I normally do, and that is because I am going to be doing a face chart video.